What's going on my trainer club? Today we are going to check out the Lake Guardians event in Pokemon Go to make sure you have all the tips, know exactly what's going on to make sure that you maximize fully on everything in Pokemon Go. So welcome to the trainer club. Here we go. Welcome back everybody. Let me know in the comments below how excited are you for the Lake Trio in Pokemon Go. Have you gotten all of them yet? Because it's an exciting time with remote raids to be able to get after all of these Pokemon, which is very exciting, which just want to give a big shout out to everybody that's been joining the Discord. We have just hit 60,000 members a little bit ago, so I am super stoked on this. Number one, I hope you guys are having a blast in there. Number two, keep up the remote rating. Number three, get yourself all of them. And then number four, if you guys do want to get into any type of premier group, that makes rating a little bit easier and more personable. We have that option. There are groups of 50, they are through my Patreon. It's going to be in the pinned comments below, both the invite to the Discord server, which is totally free, and then the upgrade if you guys do want to be a little bit more personable and have a little bit more tailored raid experience for you guys. And also, we do have Spotlight Hour tonight, which is going to be two times transfer candy, so we're gonna be transferring Pokemon tonight on the live stream. And then after that, we are gonna jump and have a celebration in the Discord, so please be there. Community Lounge, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. If you guys do wanna chat, I will be in there chatting with all you guys, so I hope to see you in there. Link in the description if you haven't joined already. I'll see you there tonight. So, with all that said, let's now get into all the details, starting off with the event. The event is pretty much live everywhere for everybody right now because it's Tuesday the 24th, then it's gonna go till Monday the 30th of November at 10 p.m. wherever you're at. And additionally, the Lake Guardian Trio is gonna go all the way until December 1st at 1 p.m. Pacific time, which is then gonna be where something else takes over and we're probably gonna get that announcement sometime in the near future. Maybe we'll see a new legendary or maybe we'll see a new shiny. I'm excited to see what's coming in the month of December as always. As far as the features of the event, we're gonna have AR mapping. So if you guys do wanna participate in the AR mapping, you can do so. There's gonna be an increase in rewards coming from there and there's also going to be field research tasks that are gonna be associated with this event. And as far as the spawns go, there's gonna be an increase in spawns that are going to be associated with water Pokemon as well as Pokemon that are semi psychic type as well and that's also going to translate into the five kilometer eggs as well that's going to hatch all these Pokemon and then finally the shiny feature of the event it's going to be a new shiny we haven't got this one before it's a gen 1 Pokemon it's going to be Goldeen which is really exciting and then obviously the Lake Guardian Trio which is going to lead us into our top tips because we want to see what Pokemon are spawning starting off with tip number one Tip number one is gonna be what are the Pokemon spawning in the wild? Which ones are gonna be the shinies? Should we focus on any of them? Are any of them going to be related to the Go Battle League and then the meta raid attackers as well? So, Pokemon number one, we have Psyduck. Psyduck is gonna be spawning in the wild. There is a shiny potential out there. Besides the shiny, it's not super relevant. We also do have Abra and Kadabra. Abra does have a shiny. It was a calm day Pokemon. So if you do catch an Abra and you want it to have counter, what you're gonna to have to do is save it, which we will check out in a tip because you wanna save it for December, which more than likely, is going to be during the wrap up when you will be able to evolve it and get counter moveset on that Pokemon. And then we have Machop, Machoke, and Lickitung. So Machop and Lickitung both have shinies. Machop, also a gen one Pokemon, it's relatively powerful. It has been taken over as the number one fighting spot from Conkeldur, but it also does get rock slide, so it does serve a purpose. This Pokemon, as the Machoke is also gonna get you more candy and it does have a shiny and it will get rarer and rarer. And then Licky Tongue, obviously not a very common Pokemon, at least for me and most places that I've traveled, I haven't seen it very often. So if there's Licky Tongue out there, you haven't got the shiny, that's something you're gonna want. However, the move that it was getting from the three hour raid window is not gonna be available. And it's also not gonna be available during the calm day because it wasn't a calm day Pokemon, it was a raid day Pokemon. So maybe in this case scenario, you might wanna hold this Pokemon if you want to get it into Licky Licky or you're gonna have to use an elite TM. And then we have Goldeen, Magikarp, and Ralts. All of them have shinies. Goldeen is gonna be the new one. Magikarp does have Aqua Tail from calm day. So if you do get a good one, save that one for December. And then we have Ralts. Ralts goes into Glade as well as Gardevoir. Unfortunately, Gardevoir, which we'll check out in a second for the Go Battle League, is better, much better, because it gets Charm in the Shadow form. Glade is the only one that's really gonna perform, but it's also a top fairy type Pokemon, but this Pokemon also gets Synchronoise, so you're gonna wanna save this Pokemon for December Calm Day. And then we get Surskit, Starly, and Bidoof. None of them have Shinies, none of them are super relevant, and then we're gonna have the Shellos that are spawning more often as well. Which is then gonna lead us into the Go Battle League. Which Pokemon are gonna stack up in which leagues and which ones should we look out for and what are gonna be the IVs to find? 
So as far as Machamp, it's gonna be actually ranked 16 in the Great League, which is really good with counter, cross chop, and rock slide combination. 100% IV is gonna be 0, 14, 11. It's gonna to have to be a baby Machop because it's only a level 18. In Ultra League, it's gonna be ranked 30 with 0, 15, 14 for the 100% IVs. And then in the Master League, it's gonna be ranked 50 all maxed out IVs, so that one can also be in tandem used for a raid counter as well because Machamp, like I said, is pretty powerful. And then on to the Licky Tongue. So Licky Tongue is gonna be ranked 89 in the Great League with Lick, Body Slam, which is the raid day move, and Power Whip. So this Pokemon is actually gonna sit under 1500. It can be buddy boosted all the way to level 41 and still be under that 1500 mark to be in the Great League. And then Licky Licky in the Ultra League is gonna be ranked 32 with Lick, Body Slam, Shadow Ball combination. This Pokemon also sits a little bit below the 2500 mark, so it can be buddy boosted all the way to level 41 and still sit in that Ultra League comfortably. But Body Slam on both of these Pokemon is going to be needing an Elite Charge TM in order for you to get it in this optimal ranking situation. And moving on next, we're gonna have Gyarados. Gyarados is gonna rank 13 with Dragon Breath, Aqua Tail, which is the Calm Day move, you're gonna have to save it because I don't really think that Calm Day moves are worth the Elite TMs because we have December coming up so soon. And then it's gonna have Crunch combination, 100% IVs on this one is gonna be a 0, 15, 14. And then in the Master League, it's gonna be ranked 32 with the exact same moveset that we just covered. And finally, the last Pokemon that's gonna be ranked under rank 100 is gonna be Gallade, ranked 93 in the Ultra League. Confusion, it's going to have Leaf Blade, which I really like that moveset. And then it's also gonna have Close Combat, the 100% IVs IVs on this Pokemon is going to be a 0 12 15. So that's going to be everything that we are covering for the Go Battle League. Also, just wanted to point out that the Machamp, Gardevoirs are relatively relevant for the Fairy Typing. That's going to be a pretty good Dragon Slayer. And from there, that's pretty much all we have going on, except for the Gyarados. It's also relatively powerful as well. Honestly, save for that Aqua Tail, the, usually the Gyarados is gonna be best served as a water typing, especially since it's water and flying, it does have a unique resistances. So, now we're gonna get on to tip number two. <music> tip number two is going to be the field research tasks. What are they, and are there anything that's gonna be really relevant? So the number one task is gonna be catch five water type Pokemon, which is going to give you a Goldeen encounter, which should be very, very easy for us to get after. This Pokemon 100% IV is gonna be 493, and it now has a shiny. And then we have use five berries to help catch Pokemon, which is gonna give you one of the starters from generation four. We are gonna have Piplup, we are gonna have Chimchar, and we're gonna have Turtwig. Piplup 100% IV is gonna be 460, Chimchar is gonna be 410, and the Turtwig is gonna be 508. Please save onto these Pokemon for the December Calm Day for them to be able to get Hydro Cannon, Blast Burn, as well as Frenzy Plant, because that is what makes these Pokemon their best versions of themselves. Then we have Win One Raid, which is gonna be a Bronzer Encounter, 258 is gonna be 100% IV and it does have a shiny. And finally, we have send three gifts to friends, which is gonna be a Starly encounter. Does not have a shiny yet. 100% IV is gonna be 308. And finally, the AR mapping is going to give two different scenarios. Honestly, the AR mapping, pretty cool. Not really that worth it yet, honestly. It does take away from the gameplay and there's better things that you could be doing with your time, but if you so choose to do so, you can either get max revives or max potions, five of each for this. So with all that said, now let's get into tip number three. Tip number three is gonna be the five kilometer eggs that are gonna feature Pokemon that are also featured in the exact same scenarios in the wild. So I do not suggest you guys go after these five kilometer eggs. There's nothing special in these five kilometer eggs. The only thing that would have made them better is if Shellos could have been both of them in there and not region locked. However, that's not the case. Shellos is still gonna be region locked. The one thing about Shellos though, even though it's semi common, especially when it starts to rain, is that at some point when the world resumes, which may not be so relevant right now, but for a GoFest in the future, I just wanna put this idea in your mind. I have talked about it. These Pokemon become very valuable because they are then going to be able to be traded whenever you travel to a region that does not have that Pokemon. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Maybe save like five or six of these in your back pocket if you have enough bag space to get after it. The eggs are gonna consist of Psyduck, Abra, and Machop. All of them have shiny potentials. The Machop 100% IV, since it is gonna be relevant for the Master League and Raid Attackers, it is going to be a 730. Goldeen is gonna be in there with a new shiny. 
we do have Magikarp, 100% IV is gonna be 157. And then finally, we have a Ralts in there as well. Ralts, since it can't go into Gardevoir and be relevant as the Gardevoir all the way up top for a fairy type attacker, even though it's gonna be dethroned very soon, it's going to be a 308. And then we have Surskit, Starly, Bidoof. Sorry to all the Bidoof fans out there. All of them are irrelevant pretty much. And then we have the Shellos. Shellos is gonna be region locked. Only where you get the Shellos actively in the wild right now is gonna be the one you hatch from five kilometer eggs. So not worth it at all. Focus on your 12 kilometer eggs. If you wanna see the full video about it up here, do so because they are definitely worth it and they increase your Stardust immensely. So. Now what do we want to do? We want to do the Lake Guardian Trios. You need to remote raid for these guys. You can get them anywhere in the world now from the comfort of your home or from the comfort of wherever you choose to play because of the remote raiding. So please get in my Discord. Choose a tier if you want to get to upgrade it and have more personable experience. Or just make sure to raid there and you can also go into the Global Friendship Hall to make sure to add trainers from all across the globe. Make sure to post your friend code in there as well. So, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you for being here. Likers, commenters, subscribers, Patreon members. Everybody takes your support, subscription, and participation to the next level. I'm going to see you guys out on the next video. Peace. I want to take this time to thank everybody who supports me in every facet. It means the world to me, and an extra special thank you to all my Patreons. I greatly appreciate the extra support to continue to allow me to pursue Pokemon Go full-time, allowing me to create my daily video uploads in the most timely fashion for everyone's benefit. Plus, I get the amazing experience of sharing my creative processes behind the scenes and raiding all around the globe with select upper tiers. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of the Trainer Club. You all mean the absolute world to me, and I will see you guys out on the next video.